Hi, my name is Hopal Haven and I'm a senior health science public health major and researcher in Dr. Han's lab. This work was done in collaboration with Dr. Ron June's lab at MSU. I'd like to start by thanking the CERF committee for, for still giving me the opportunity to present this work today. Today, I will be talking about why NASA should care about osteoarthritis, a metabolomic analysis to provide insight into the risk of joint unlo unloading in microgravity environments. The unloading environment of microgravity has well-established effects on the musculoskeletal system. The, muscles, the musculoskeletal system consists of bone, muscle, cartilage, tendons, ligaments, and joints with the effects of microgravity being extensively studied for bone and muscle. Un Un unloading of bone is known to cause demineralization and, and skeletal muscle loses math, mass and strength. The effects of unload, unloading are generally thought to be re re reversible with joint loading in a normal gravity environment capable of restoring phys physiological properties of these tissues. But less is known regarding the effects of microgravity on the articular cartilage of synovial joints. Articular cartilage is a low frictionless tissue that functions to resist mechanical forces experienced by the joint and allows for smooth joint movement. It is composed of an extracellular matrix, the pericellular matrix, and, cartil and cartilage cells called chondrocytes. Re regular loading of the joint stimu simulates the synthesis of matrix components to preserve healthy articular cartilage in its entirety, specifically structure and function. Conversely, a lack of joint loading has been shown to lead to the breakdown of the articular cartilage exhibited by the breakdown of cardioglycans and collagen type 2 ECM network. Degradation associated with proteoglycan and collagen loss is thought to be irreversible due to the avascular nature of the articular cartilage. Therefore, un unloading of the articular cartilage in a microgravity environment may have deleterious effects on joint health. With this, studies show that biomechanical unloading both on Earth and in microgravity environments is linked to articular cartilage degradation. For example, human bed rest patients exhibit pro proteoglycan loss in the articular cartilage when, Im when immobilized. Although there have been relatively few studies investigating the effects of microgravity on articular cartilage, those that have report reduced proteoglycan synthesis, loss, lowered dynamic stiffness of cartilage constructs, and cytoskeleton reorganization. So you may be asking, how does this relate to OA? Well, the articular cartilage degradation exhibited in response to joint unloading as previously discussed is similar to that seen in OA. Proteoglycan loss, type two collagen degradation, cytoskeleton reorganization, and reduced cartilage stiffness are all hallmarks of OA. OA is the most prevalent de degenerative joint disease commonly associated, associated with degradation of the articular cartilage. It is characterized by joint pain, stiffness, loss of function, and reduced quality of life. There are a number of risk factors for OA, including both joint trauma, obesity, aging, and of particular interest to this study, a lack of joint loading. Although the exact mechanism of disease is unclear, OA is at least partially attributed, attributed, attributed to a metabolic imbalance of anabolic and catabolic activities of chondrocytes, leading to the degradation of ECM components. This may suggest that the unloading of joints and associated cartilage degradation exhibited in a microgravity in, in environment may lead to or mimic the development of OA. Regardless, OA is a major health concern for astronauts exposed to prolonged microgravity environments. Because the unloading environment in space could lead to catabolism and cartilage de degeneration similar to OA, we analyze human OA cartilage explants to better understand the metabolic shifts in OA with the ultimate goal of identifying potential drug targets to treat OA. Therefore, the goals of this study were to identify any differences in OA articular cartilage grades 3 verse 4 to generate a more comprehensive view of aberrant metabolism in OA pathogenesis, and secondly, to spatially map metabolic patterns in OA cartilage. 
Therefore, my hypothesis was that metabolic ph phenotypes will exist in grades three and four OA cartilage and distinct metabolic profiles will correlate to cartilage se severity. And how I did this was I eval evaluated human articular cartilage using global metabolomic profiling by liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. Under IRB approval, 11 the femoral heads were obtained following total joint arthroplasty from local clinics with partial patient information. We noticed that areas of the femoral head did not have consistent cartilage de degeneration, which is why we wanted to further identify metabolic phenotypes that correspond to areas of greater de degeneration. To do so, femoral heads were separated in, into four quadrants as seen in figure two, and articular cartilage was shaved from each quadrant. Cartilage shavings were then homogenized and metabolites were extracted using our previously established protocol. Metabolite extracts were, were analyzed via high performance LCMS in positive mode. Global metabolomic profiling of by, by LCMS generates a very large multivariate data set. Thus, we used a variety of supervised and unsupervised multivariate statistics to analyze and visualize over, overall so we can narrow the data set and identify metabolite features of interest. The metabolite features could then be matched to metabolite identities and pathways in MSP pathways, which employs an, al an algorithm called MummyChog. First, we wanted to assess overall differences in, in global metabolomic profiles of our eight ex experimental groups, grades three, quadrants one through four, and grade four, quadrants one through four. We used two unsupervised statistical analyses, high, higher, hierarchical cluster analysis and principal component analysis to view the variation in our data set in which we do not see clear separation separation between quadrants or grade of OA. We then used a supervised cluster analysis, partial least squares discriminant analysis shown on the right to seek out differences between cohorts. And in this plot, we also did not observe separation between quadrants, but we do see that there are two clusters of, of samples which actually correspond to the grades of o OA. So these results le led us to our first conclusion that distinct metabolic phenotypes do not e exist in the quadrants of the articular cartilage covering the femoral head. These results indicate that global shifts in cartilage metabolism occur across the entire disease joint, not just specific regions. Because we saw some dis discrimination be between grades three and four samples by supervised methods, we then decided to remove the quadrant identifier and focus on grade differences for our next analysis. We saw that unsupervised analyses HCA and PCA in the left and center plots do show clustering of samples within their respective grades. Using our supervised analysis PLSDA on the right, we see very clear discrimination between grades three and four with almost all samples clustering within their respective cohorts, which led us to our second conclusion that distinct metabolic phenotypes do exist between articular cartilage from grades three and four OA hip joints. These results suggest that radiography confirmed grades of OA are associated with distinct metabolic phenotypes in articular cartilage and there is a global metabolic shift from one grade to the next in late stages of OA. We then wanted to determine what specific metabolites and, and metabolic pathways were distinct be between grades three and four. To do so, we employed variable importance in projection scores from PLSDA to, specific, to select specific metabolite features of interest. Metabolite features with the highest VIP scores contributed most to the separation between grades three and four cartilage. The top 25 are listed on the y-axis as their master charge ratios, and on the right-hand axis, the green and red indicate if that metabolite feature was in greater abundance in grade three or four cartilage. These, these metabolite features map to vitamin C metabolism, ascorbate metabolism, and fatty acid oxidation. We also use volcano plot analysis shown on the right to identify differentially regulated met metabolite features between grades using both full change and false discovery rate adjusted p-value. Metabolite features in the upper right quadrant had a full change greater than two and a p-value less than 0.05, and these features were significantly higher in grade four in comparison to three. These 
metabolite features map to vitamin B5 CoA biosynthesis from, from panthenate and vitamin H metabolism. Metabolite features in the upper left quadrant had a full change less than 2 and a p-value less than 0.05, and these features were significantly higher in grade 3 in, in comparison to 4. These metabolite features map to vitamin E metabolism, the urea cycle, and aspartate and asparagine metabolism. So taken together, these pathways suggest that a shift in metabolism from grades 3 to 4 may be attributed to changes in cartilage matrix components, oxidative stress, fatty acid metabolism, vitamin metabolism, and amino acid metabolism. To our knowledge, this is the first study to generate LCMS-based global metabolomic profiles of OA articular cartilage. Importantly, we, we generated global metabolomic profiles of articular cartilage from donors with radiography confirmed grades 3 and 4 OA. We identified a number of of metabolic pathways distinct between grades three and four, with many overlapping with previous studies on altered metabolism in OA patho pathogenesis. The results herein suggest that, radi that radiography confirmed grades <coughs> three and four cartilage are associated with distinct metabolic shifts. <coughs> A greater understanding of altered cartilage metabolism in OA may lead to potential drug targets to slow, halt, or reverse cartilage damage. Future studies will will increase in sample size where additional partial patient clinical information will be included, um, score cartilage severity by histological analysis, and incorporation of grades 1, 2, and healthy cartilage for comparison. In regards to NASA broader impacts, a recurring issue that NASA faces is the health, health of their space crews before, during, and after space missions due to microgravity. The identification of metabolic markers of OA could lead to early diagnosis of OA for astronauts. To ensure that proper treatments are admit, administered during or immediately following exposure to microgravity to slow or stop the progression of OA into the later more severe stages. <clears throat> this work will enhance our, our understanding of OA patho, pathogenesis and may lead to new drug targets. This could lead to the development of specific therapeutic treatments for this in the microgravity environments to counteract the possible effects of joint unloading. Furthermore, this work may provide the field with a deeper understanding of, of a major health risk following prolonged exposure to microgravity, which is osteoarthritis. In regards to societal broader imp impacts, the prevalence and economic burden of OA is constantly in increasing down here on earth. It is anticipated by um, 2050 that 130 million Americans will be affected by OA. Currently, joint re replacements remain the only effective treatment option for end-stage OA. There is a critical need for, for, far, for pharmaceutical drug targets at optimal points of intervention to prevent and treat o OA and especially at the various grades. Overall, this study has enhanced our understanding of OA pathogenesis and will allow the field um, to move towards identifying novel molecular markers and pharmacological targets for prevention and treatment of OA. I'd like to thank my research team, Dr. Han, for her support, and Jenna and Ethan for their assistance with, pro with protocols and data an analysis. I'd also like to thank the uh, data science program at, at Carroll, specifically Dr. Sol Dr. Sullivan, for incorporating this data set into the curriculum and assisting with the data, the data analysis piece. I would also like to thank the June Lab and, and the Mass Spec Corps at MSU for their assistance in running samples. Lastly, my funding sources, including Montana Inbury, the NJ Murdoch Charitable Trust, and NASA's Mon Montana Space Grant Consor Consortium for support in completing these projects, travel, and for lab materials. Thank you.